You came with Julius, didn't you? Well, whatever business brought you here, you'd best keep your hands off that Aether, right? It's deactivated, but rather you didn't mess about with it. There are others throughout the city, built by Garleans, for Garleans, could teleport all over in the blink of an eye, provided there was a terminal nearby. These days, however, we use the Aetherized power to keep this place lit, though that comes at the cost of its normal function. Oh. So that's why I can't use the Aetherite. Got it. <clears throat> so gold. Stone soldiers on the verge of losing consciousness. Sad. It's you, Declan Rakuma. I served under Lord Gaius in the 14th Legion. I was there on the night of the Praetorium Fall. You and your adventurers, you killed them. My comrades, my friends, you swept them aside in their dozens. As though they were nothing to you. And maybe I am too, just another faceless enemy to cut down. But I won't be long into our country until you get what you deserve. Mark my words. Bro. I'll f*** you right now. Okay? You do realize the only reason I can do is because you guys are trying to destroy the, like, world. And using primal energy for nefarious means. I know who you are, so-called champion of yours here. Come to glow, have you? Oh, wipe that smirk off your face by the blood of our fallen compatriots, I swear I'll- Ugh. Damn, told the stoochers. Of all the time, the worst of the lot, within striking distance, you can't even muster the strength. If it weren't for the third bleeding us, we'd be the end of you. Regilius' treachery nearly cost Quintus his life, but we made our escape, took shelter in a mansion, tended to the wounded as we prepared to strike back, and then... Night fell, and we gathered around the radio, then the roar, the terrible roar. The capital was in chaos, but we were spared. If you can call this a mercy, mind attack, but body broken, a soldier in name alone. You know what, man? Why are we helping these guys again? Hey, yo, it's A Green Polar Bear here. I'm on Trovo at dot live at A Green Polar Bear. I'm also on Twitch.tv at the same time. AGPB Games on Twitter and Instagram if you do that. Also, Discord link will be in the comments. Anyways, comment, like, subscribe, and enjoy the video. Did you learn anything of notice? Yeah, everybody hates me and they want to fight me. I don't have a choice, right? Like, I always say. All right, Flavius. Who's that? My eyes, they, I can't see all that well. Oh, thank you, the numbness has subsided a little, but I know I won't last much longer. You should look to the others who can still fight. Give them my ration. If me going hungry means someone else lives to see another guy, so be it. You guys are in a pretty sorry state, I guess. Just so those you met fare no better. I was afraid you would say that. I know we were warned against meddling in their affairs, but we can't leave them like this. Perhaps we might gain permission to have the contingent deliver supplies. Well, seen enough. Julius, the people here have barely enough food and fuel to survive. Have you and the others been able to procure any more supplies? Feel is a greater concern, though. We had some cerulean set aside until it was stolen. We haven't identified the culprit. Could have been the other refugees or one of the afflicted, for all we know. Either way, we're down to the last dregs. Without the heating they need, those in poor health are only going to get worse instead of better. If it's cerulean you need, our contingent has secured a ready supply. We can have some over. Nope. We will not accept your charity. One of your comrades mentioned something along those lines. Those mysterious comrades of yours, I suppose. Okay, well, from what I've seen, there's little you could do to interfere. There's no harm in telling you. One of our scouts spotted a hooded man issuing instructions to the afflicted, or in the bastard words, 
loyal service of the Telephra. And he made his way inside the Imperial Palace, or what stands in its place. We'd identified the seat of the enemy's power. We realized Lord Quintus dispatched a messenger to the Tenth Legion, saying as much, and instructing them to join forces with the Provincial Legions to prepare for a combined assault on the Telothari. Once your allies arrive, your contingent will be set running for the hills. Then we shall reclaim the capital by our own hand. Ah, you're stupid. And how do you intend to survive in the meantime? At this rate, many of your countrymen will perish long before reinforcements can reach Garland. They need help now. Say the word and we will bring you Cerulean. Jules finds himself in the somewhat bizarre position of leading ambassadors of an enemy contingent on a salvage plan. We begin our search for Cerulean in Regio Urbanissima. First location is Forum Solius, a part to the northwest of the station. You are so you are to remain close at all times and act only as ordered. Follow me. This is the park. I'm surprised I found space for one amongst all these buildings. Actually, the recreational areas came first. The houses were later built around them. A healthy society requires communal spaces for children to play and adults to socialize. This park was named after the founding father's empire, the great Solus Zos Galvis. Did we come to extract Cerulean from the wreck Magitek armor? No, we've already drained it dry. Same goes for the rest of the Makina in the vicinity. But as our Cerulean has been stolen, we must scour the city for every last drop. And while I don't expect to find out everything here, I've decided to try one more time in case something has been overlooked. I see then with your permission, we will commence the search. The contraption is built in the style of the Imperial War Machine, armed with a battery of weapons and capable of transforming into different configurations, but on a closer inspection, <laughs> it's just a slide. Nerd. I don't like that the fucking scythe is on a hinge. Now that I think about it, it's like, why would you do that? I get it so that it's not like sticking out and stabbing people. For a child to play as shopkeeper. Well, if we had a Lalafell. Oh, yeah. Uh, I believe it's time for New Minion. Bluebird. Uh oh. Well, he's on me now. Can't take him away. Any luck? There ain't shit. No sign of any cerulean. Hardly surprising. But disappointing nonetheless. Couldn't help you noticing you gazing at the pond. Is something the matter? The pond was heated to stop it from freezing over. So like all the other children, they just had to wade in and splash about. Would have stayed there had it didn't drag them out. We'd be sopping wet when all said was done. And every time when we'd come home, Mother would scold us, saying we'd catch our death walking around like that. The pond was heated.
Alpha no, you have a knack of finding dry wood. Why don't you bring me some? Let's have some. A blast of verifier should do the trick. Leave it to me. You're not planning on going in there, are you? Of course I am. That tank isn't gonna fetch itself. There's nothing so involved as extracting unprocessed ceruleum from a frozen lake. Like how the tappers do it. We're talking about a shallow pond in a park, and we have a way of warming up ourselves afterwards. But that's insane. So, fancy a dip. Step aside while I drink the pond dry. That way we'll find it in no time. The last thing we need is you catching a cold. A little Frederick competition might make things interesting. Step aside while I drink the pond dry. That may be the stupidest thing I've heard in a while, and that's saying something considering who my brother is. I can't fault your enthusiasm, though. Let's do it my way first. If that doesn't work, perhaps then you can try your method. Without no help. You delve into the murky water, come up and handed to add injury to insult the icy wind on your damp clothing chills into the bone. Oh, great. Same thing. I would say you're not doing anything, but it's cool. I expected that. Oh, shocker. It's the last one. No way. Blech. Beneath the water, your fingers catch on what you think might be a handle. Yeah, ceruleum tank. You guys see it, right? However, your grand discovery comes at a personal cost as you become acutely aware of the freezing cold and a rancid odor emanating from every hem of your body. Joe's will doubtless feel compelled to pinch his nose shut when you deliver two of your prize. Did you find anything? Sniff, sniff, I hope you did. There's your ceruleum tank. That's it. And there's still some ceruleum left. And the fire's still not ready. Hold on, I'll give Alpha Noah a hand. Damn straight, bro. Call me an olden, but because of by fire I am reborn and my clothes are mostly dry now. <laughs> I appreciate you doing it, but you should have discussed the plan beforehand. Well, despite the way you've been treated, you're still on voice, deserving of protection. If you were to die by a watch, she would be most displeased. We live better than many. What was Garamel like in those days? I don't know if I care all that much, dude. Honestly, I'll say. Everything, it was everything you can imagine. And so much more. Even during the coldest winters, we always found warmth and comfort at home. Coming in from the snow, taking off your coat, and sitting down for a hot meal with a family. Visiting friends and relatives, receiving that same welcome, knowing they had everything they needed. Walking down the street, seeing the lights in the house, hearing the faint sounds of laughter and song of happiness. And although the summers came and went all too quickly in that brief respite, the ice would melt and a forgotten grass make its triumphant return. Gray clouds gave way to blue skies. Some mornings we'd climb to the top of the tallest building we could find to watch the sunrise. Never again, those rooftops are rubble. Those friends dead and those memories, but if I could reclaim even a fraction of what we once had. Soon, our chance will come. 
We just need to hold on a little longer. All right. Now that you've recovered from your escapades in the pond, there's another location I'd like to search just outside the park. As you can see, this place is littered with the remnants of various types of war machina. While com my comrades and I have already recovered the tanks from the less damaged units, those that took a more severe beating are harder to scavenge. We decided to save those for another time, that time being for now. Rather than price them again piece by piece, it would be quicker to remove the outer casing using compact explosives. With luck, we'll gain access to the tanks without rupturing them. Though the force generated by these devices is relatively weak. I would advise you stand clear to avoid being hit by shrapnel. Before even bothering, though, you should check the Makina's ceruleum gauge to see if there is any left. It should provide an accurate reading, even when the unit itself is inactive. If the gauge is broken, I'll let you decide whether to use an explosive or not. Should you need more, come to me. Uh, what did I just read? Mm. Understood. Let's go to work. Fuel tank is empty. Find it to be completely empty. Cool. The serum gauge on this unit appears to have been broken, giving you no way to determine how much fuel its tank may hold. Retrieve the war machine of ceruleum tank to find it's still half full or half empty, depending on one's perspective. Either way, Julius will serve you, pleased. Damn straight. And. Oh. Done it again. Truly, luck is on our side. On your side. With this, we should be able to refuel quite a few of the years. It's time we headed back. Wait, here we we're here a while ago to see how Alpha and Alpha Note are faring. Finally escaped the watchful gaze of your keepers, have we? Don't react. You'll only draw attention to yourself. Just carry on as you are and listen. After you left with the Garlean lad, Lucia bade a few of us scouts follow you at a discreet distance. We observed you being led into the station, but decided against venturing inside. When you emerged sometime later, and we saw that the twins were sporting Magitek collars, it was clear what had taken place. Now, as quietly as you can, tell me everything. The Legatus himself, eh? Now there's a surprise. This is also the first I've heard of a plan to join forces with the Tenth and storm the Tower of Babel. An interesting development, and perhaps the opportunity we've been waiting for. Our comrades back at the camp also received some rather promising news, but it's still too early to get our hopes up. For now, keeping yourselves out of harm's way comes before all else. Whatever demands the Garleans make, indulge them. With luck, this will all be over soon. Until then. They had not gone far. We searched high and low, but no luck, I'm afraid. I might have guessed you'd be the only one to find anything. What's up, Yoshi? I wasn't expecting much to begin with. Eventually, there will be nothing left out here for us to safely salvage. 
For now, this will have to suffice. We should return to the station. Ah, oh, there you are. Heard you'd gone hunting for ceruleum above ground. Brought back a king's ransom? Hardly. But thanks to these three, we have enough to last a little while longer. Well, well. It's not at all what I was expecting, these ones. But for savages, they seem positively docile. It's a poor attempt at humour. In all honesty, I'm grateful for your efforts. But even with another night of warmth, there are those among us who may not live to see the morrow. I trust your expedition was fruitful. Lord Quintus! Use what you procured to refuel the armor. But, sir, what about the heaters for the camp? The time for action is upon us. My men and I have matters to discuss. In the meantime, you are to wait here. Do not forget, you are being watched. The time for action. What did he mean by that? I can only speculate. Clearly something requiring their Magitech, given what we just heard. Whether they plan to utilize it now, or after they join with the Tenth, is another question. escape this cold? Return to and reclaim the idyllic spaces of which Eula spoke? Finished your war, Council? Alphino and Alizea are to stay here as our prisoners. They will be released once your comrades have relinquished their supplies and withdrawn from Garlean soil. Until our terms are met, they will be detained at a separate location. After everything we've said and done, this is how you treat us. Our allies have but limited supplies. They may stave off cold and starvation for a short while, but what then? For now. Keeping yourselves out of harm's way comes before all else. Whatever demands the Garleans make, indulge them.
Get them out of here. Mother... Coward. So I'll take don't resist, they'll be fine. Whatever, bro. <clears throat> I honestly don't care. It's kinda nice to get away from them for a little bit. You know, accompany me back to your camp where I will meet with your leader and present Lord Quintus's demands. Before we depart, however, there's something I would ask of you. Assuming your contingent complies, this implies they surrender will need to be transported here to task fall to legionaries Marcellinius and Octavia, who will pilot Magitech armor to your headquarters. You are to inform them that we are leaving shortly. Tell them to ask the Isle for further details. Once you've seen to that, meet me by the exit. I'm gonna... Somebody's getting sliced. That's all I know. Maimon? Maimon's gonna be a happening. I don't look that you should be the one to deliver the news. If those are my orders, then so be it for the glory of Gargle Mauled. Oh my god. They're gonna attack me. What do you want with me? That's the I also Lord Quintus has reached a decision. I knew he would understand. But Savage is a ruthless, merciless creature to defeat him. We too must be uncompromised. Fulfill your duty. They're gonna s They're gonna try to kamikaze, right? Have you done as instructed? What do you mean by ask the aisle? Right, literally, what I can say is this, you have no cause for concern if our demands are met. You and I are in this together. Like it or not, we have to cooperate. There is one other matter, a place I'd like you to visit on the way to your camp. It's a short walk from here, follow me. This is my home. Ah, home. At least it was until that night. I was with Lord Quintus when the capital fell, and thus spared. My family, who did not own a radio, were less fortunate. When dawn came, I made my way here. My parents, my little brother and sister they were still inside but they weren't themselves and they they tried to I had to Aww. I had promised to take them away from the capital that very morning to somewhere safe to hide until the fighting stopped Come on, Julius. The Garlean flag bears a chain. The bonds between our countrymen. A red link at its center. The blood 
of the fallen, our loved ones who lived and died for Garlemald. But if she too fell, who would be left to remember them and their sacrifice? What enduring proof would there be that they were ever here? If we had turned to your gods, would they have saved us? I'm sorry, forget I spoke. We should go. Internal struggle? No use. Believe me, I do not enjoy being here any more than you. But he wanted us to play along, so that is what we will do. <laughs> She's like, I don't fucking want to cuddle you. It's so cold. Painfully so. Unbearably. I've been thinking about what Quintus said. About why no one would accept Garlian rule. Irreconcilable differences. When coexistence isn't an option, only conquest remains. Varus at Gimlet said much the same. Only by uniting the world beneath a single standard would we rid ourselves of the Asians. United as one people, one race cleansed of imperfections. A cold, and unforgiving vision. And when we fail to live up to their standards, what place is there for us in their world? But the truly sad, truly frustrating thing is how damnably similar it all is to the lofty ideals of Father and the Forum. Non-intervention, always non-intervention, Protect our knowledge and our people, and to hells with the rest of you. And yet, I can see how it happened. Varys and Father looked to their elders for guidance and took their virtues as their own. But for this world was of their making. In who else could they place their trust? All of us lost in a sea of chaos. Searching desperately for purpose and meaning. But it shouldn't just be an extension of another's. It has to be ours. It has to be. We all have a stake in this world. No one should be silenced. I won't deny that we lack the experience of people such as Father or Quintus. Perhaps they've come to see the world as a series of problems. And the most efficient way of solving them? To reduce everything to fundamental forms. A stone is a stone. A cloud, a cloud. A flower, no more than that. Simple descriptions that strip the subject of distinguishing characteristics. A man is a man. Divided according to race, creed, or allegiance to some, defined by such associations. Is that what you think? In my misbegotten youth. But what I believed wisdom was no more than aggressive ignorance. 
I've since learned to look beyond the banners and the politics. To see people as individuals with their own hopes and dreams. As for my dream of building a better world, well, every day I'm reminded that it is far more complex than I had ever imagined. But it only spurs me onward to find the wisdom and the strength to see it through to the very end. supplies and an immediate withdrawal. These are your conditions. Demands. And you forgot about the airship. Once again, you will leave one behind. It will be used to return the prisoners. Their collars will be removed prior to the exchange. So in the end, not even Father's expertly worded rhetoric could deter you from your chosen course. Huh? Not that I thought for a moment that it would. I've no love for violence, of course, but ours is a cause worth fighting for. I just wish he'd realize it too. Sometimes the only way to protect the ones you love is to take a stand. To refuse to suffer in silence. I want you to know I share your conviction. Whether it be on the battlefield or in the debating chamber, I won't back down. I guess what I'm saying is... You've found your own reason to fight. Yes. Yes, I have. God's willing, there will come a day when we can finally lay down our arms and there will be peace. But not until the Telophoroi have been defeated once and for all. And you, brother, will have a vital part to play. By your words and deeds, you'll lead the way. I pray I am up to the task. There'll always be naysayers. Those who think us fools for even trying. It's easy for learned elites to criticize earnest efforts and assert their moral superiority, all without offering alternatives. Not that their sophistry has ever wounded you, so stubborn and strong, stronger than you even know. Don't ever change, you hear me? If you stumble, I'll be there to catch you or give you a thick ear, maybe both for good measure. Thank you, Alizé. The scouts have secured Alizé and Alfino. Their collars were removed without complication as well. They report no casualties, not for their party nor the guards who will wake from their premature slumber in due course. It would appear the situation has changed. I propose new terms. We have information that will be of great interest to Lord Quintus. And I wish to speak with him in person. No. In the event you rejected our first proposal, we came prepared with a second. Loyal soul 
soldiers of the First Legion, proud servants of Garlemald. Of the fallen Emperor Varys shall safeguard these lands from the barbarian hordes until our countrymen return! Stop! Both of you! <laughs> no. <laughs> Just no. This is child may be the worst emissary I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no. We received an urgent communication from the Grand Company of Eorzea. Envoys from the Imperial Army, led by members of the 10th Legion, came to Alamigo and requested an audience. They explained that their efforts to coordinate the reclamation of the capital with the aid of the 4th, 5th, 8th, and 12th had ended in failure. Communication between most legions has broken down entirely. Most of the 10th's conscripts have deserted, leaving their forces severely depleted. That is why, unable to continue the fight on their own, they and their allies turned to the Grand Company of Eorzea for aid. Lies. Every word. It is the truth, and I have not finished. The Tenth has requested that we deliver a message to Lord Quintus. Have the ill stand down. You have been listening, my lord. What, what are your orders? Inform her that we will honor the tenth decision. Damn straight. Bereft of hope and now dignity. I release you from your duty. All of you. I take solace, your radiance, in the knowledge you are not here to witness our debasement. It was a grand, glorious dream we shared. Your beard is stupid. Of a world united, of peace and prosperity. We are ghosts, you and I. Memories of days gone by. Bonds forged in blood that I will not see tarnished. Oh, God. Quintus? No. Quickly! We have to reach the station before it's too late. Before it was too late. Before Quintus blows his <laughs> head off. If there is still a chance that Quintus will agree to a truce, we must take it. He won't. I just hope we get there before he and his men do something rash.
They were preparing for war while the refugees in their care were left to go hungry. A reckless, short-sighted plan that risks the welfare of the people they are sworn to protect. Nevertheless, we cannot compel them to accept our aid. If we were to arrive in force with the intent to do so, we would only incite panic. But perhaps they could be persuaded to follow one of their own. Go with Jules back to the station and give him lead. The refugee's here. I'll take what I can get. Understood. Hey, Julius. It's not like... I mean... Hey, buddy. I'll, I'll go talk to him. Oh, it's Ixian. Nice. Well, we're gonna see his thick bounce the whole way over here, because, you know... 